Awesome uh, to be with all of you uh, here again today as we get ready to embark upon another season. Uh, what an exciting time in Cyclone Athletics. Uh, so, so great to see all the amazing accomplishments already by our fall sports. Uh, football have really enjoyed uh, the start to their season and enjoyed following their program, which means our season's right around the corner. And uh, our guys are, are working every single day uh, to build those daily habits, uh, that work ethic, uh, that we hold in high regard. Uh, they've been a group that's been very focused on doing that. And um, we talk about stacking days. We've got a lot of days in front of us to stack. And that's what we'll continue to do. Uh, but we've, we've been really uh, fortunate uh, with the coachability of this group and the desire to, to practice and approach that a certain way on a daily basis. And uh, if we can continue to do that, um, hopefully uh, things, will, things will go our way as the games start to approach. Yeah, the, uh, the goal for us every day is, is to have a great practice, right, and, and a great film session and great workouts. And what that all entails is coming in with a tremendous amount of focus on that job that's in front of you that day because there's some days we're playing more live, there's some days it's more drill work, combination of the two. And so we want for our guys to come in every day and say, whatever's put in front of me, uh, I'm going to attack it and give it the best that I can. Um, you know, beyond that, Again, we, we talk about the stacking days and how we can every day continue to get better. So we're not as much for setting goals on what we want to do this year or what how many games we want to win. Uh, we're focused on if we get everything out of that day and, and, and those daily habits that you know we'll continue to improve. And I think that's the name of the game. So um, my challenge for our guys is, is really to be able to practice for an hour and a half to two hours every day with focus, attitude, effort, energy that it requires to play at the level of a Big 12 game so that we're prepared for that quality of opponent when they approach. Kurt was so good off the bench last year. How do you use him this year with you know, being back another year? Does he start? Does he stay in that role? Or how do you just view that? Yeah, Kurt has been really consistent. The momentum that he concluded last season with, as well as he was playing, he's carried that forward throughout the summer, throughout the fall. Uh, into practice. Uh, in terms of starting positions and where that all uh, is at this point, it's up in the air. You know, I, I think you see all the time that we return four starters or we return, you know, three starters and, and four guys that played starting minutes. Uh, I'm excited about the depth we have. I'm excited about the competition that we had uh, on a daily basis. And at this point, whether it's Kurt or anybody, uh, we're continuing to show and demonstrate by what happens each day in practice, you know what what we're capable of doing and what we believe we can do when the games approach. So uh, I don't know exactly uh, how that all shakes out, but I can say that Kurt Jones has played at a high level, and that's something that you know we hold in a high regard and proud of him for how he's continued to work. You got Josh Jefferson back. I think it was about a week maybe before summer workouts were over. How is he kind of gotten into fall practice now, and is he kind of starting to really take off and be the guy that you thought he, he would? Yeah, Joshua, we're fortunate to have some background uh, at previous step, had recruited him, had a relationship with him, so knew of the character uh, that he had and know, uh, have a knowledge of what his goals are and how he's willing to work to do that. Uh, as we've seen him be on the court every single day, you can see the, the steps forward that he's taking. Last week, uh, he stepped up in a major way rebounding for us. He was a guy that uh, led us in rebounds for the week, which is something that's really important in our program. Uh, he's continued to understand the value of the effort-based things and the physical things and bringing those to the table every single day. Uh, and also, you know, in the Big 12, uh, it's a very physical league. And, and realizing and understanding that, you know what, every foul isn't going to get called. There's going to be plays on the glass that – you know, officials at times could probably call a foul every time in rebounding. So for him, it's it's taking that on, it's embracing that, it's hitting it head on. Um, but he's got a skill set at his size that's that's unique. His ability, his vision, uh, his ability to pass the ball, and make teammates better is something that we're excited about. So you know, having him out there every day has has, has been awesome. We've seen you know the steps and the gradual improvement. Um, we're going to continue to challenge him each and every day to be better than he was the day before. Hi, TJ. Hi, Rob. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> um, 
What's the challenge every time when you bring, for instance, this year, a whole new group of bigs to go from the vision of here's how we think they'll fit and here's how we think they'll make our team better to seeing it revealed throughout practice and, and then building off of that? Yeah, we, you know, we look for guys in the recruiting process that have proven to handle adversity well, uh, their work habits, uh, they're not... Um, they're very self-aware of the things that they do well. Uh, we outline for them uh, that the importance of, of giving everything you have to do, doable effort-based things, and those guys have done that. Um, as what happens over time is you learn more about their skill set every day in practice, the things that they do well, more specifically offensively, the positions you can put them in, where they're, uh, they feel they're at their best, um, and the things that they can do. So I feel like with all... All three of those bigs, um, you know, with Brant, uh, with Deshaun, and with Joshua that have come in, um, you know, they've got big shoes to fill. You know, I've got a lot of respect. We've put, certainly put a bow on last season and, and what we've done. Um, but at the same time, those guys, uh, there's a standard. And, and they knew that coming here, that there was a standard to uphold. And they had to do that every single day. So I think across the board, there's a consistent theme of, if you play really hard, you work really hard, you're a great teammate, uh, you have tremendous focus on the task at hand, that we are open-minded in terms of your development and leaning into the things that you prove to do well on a daily basis. Uh, those guys are aware of that, and they've done a good job up to this point. And is there a certain versatility you look for? Because of how many times you use, like, say, Robert Jones in the high post, passing out of that. It seems like you brought in guys like Deshaun and, and uh, Joshua in particular well, consistency, you know, throughout recruiting, if you look at our guard position, you know, we look at guys that are that are physical, that are tougher, that have that versatility, that at times in our defense you get switched on a big, or you end up in a situation where you need to utilize that physical skill set, you're capable of doing so. On the front, uh, front line, we love mobility. We love uh, guys that can get out in the ball screen, guys that can fly around defensively, guys that can give multiple efforts on the glass. Uh, to me, a lot of that's mental focus, but some of it comes down to your ability to react and be instinctive. Uh, that is something that we value. And then we still look into the skill level because the, as we continue to try to um, move forward with things offensively, uh, having those guys be able to be decision makers with the basketball, finishers at the rim, uh, guys that can think and adapt to what's going on in the game and make those plays, that's going to make uh, offense flow better for everybody. And so that's something that we look for as well. Keyshawn had the opportunity to run the offense a lot more with Taman being out a bit this summer. How have you seen his maturation process continue? Yeah, Keyshawn has the unique ability because of his engaging nature of his personality to galvanize his teammates. Uh, we saw that last year. Couldn't have been any more on display when we went down and played TCU and felt like it was a, a must-win type of game in a tough environment. And, uh, and he, he essentially uplifted his teammates around him and, and elevated everybody to play at a higher level. Um, that's something we're continuing to work on every day. Uh, he made the most of the opportunities that he had in front of him this summer. Uh, certainly, it's important for him to play well with Taman. And then at times when Taman's not in the game, um, I'm continuing to challenge Keyshawn because I believe that mentally he has the ability to be phenomenal every single night out from a consistency standpoint. And so that's something I've focused on more with him is the consistency of his mindset, his mentality, his focus. Uh, what we've seen is when you know he has that mindset defensively and he's really guarding and he's making plays. Uh, that it translates and transfers immediately over to his ability to play offense and make plays for himself and his teammates. So um, there's a high level of accountability for him to take a step forward, uh, and I have all the confidence in the world that he will do that. Keyshawn, Taman, and Kurt played so well together down the stretch last year where they felt like they were really enmeshed, basically. Have you seen that carry over? Or does that need two games a week for four months to reestablish? Yeah, I, d I do think with, with chemistry and, and lineups and, and how guys play together, I do think that's more the byproduct of time. Although, you know, fortunate for some of the dynamics that transpired and allowed us to, to win some games last year. 
Uh, I think it's totally new season. Everything's different. Everything's new. Uh, we've taken more of the approach and practice of let's put our guys against each other. Let's let's elevate the competition. Let's get good at fighting through adversity, having challenges. So we haven't had as many days of practice where we put those three together and say, hey, pick up where you left off. Um, that was a, a great dynamic for us when you have – Again, all three of those guys have played point guard at some point in their life. And that, that is from a decision-making standpoint uh, and pride in taking care of the basketball. Certainly not turning the ball over, having toughness with the ball is important. And those three guys, you know, from an assist to turnover standpoint, from a playmaking standpoint, give you that ability. And uh, certainly going to happen again this year where they'll be out there together and have opportunities together from what I've seen so far. And I think regardless of you know, who you're out there, we really try to pride our guys on understanding each other's strengths so that your problem solvers in the moment, we teach you how to play as opposed to memorizing a bunch of plays. What's the expectation for Leland this year? Yeah, you know, I want him to take a step. Uh, I really care about him. Uh, he means the world to me, somebody that trusted us uh, in coming here. Um, had a, a really good freshman year, um, but there's a step for him to take. And I think specifically, I want him hunting more three-point shots. Uh, it's something where he's an elite shooter, and at times he doesn't honor his talent enough by being aggressive. So a consistent theme for us is hunt more threes, hunt more threes, um, because when he's ultra aggressive, it opens up the court, and I think he plays with a lot more confidence. And then uh, defensively, uh, he's one of those guys that he has a very good idea scheme-wise of what we're trying to accomplish. But I'm looking for him to finish more plays, specifically on the glass. Be a better rebounder on the defensive end. He's added 15 pounds of muscle. Like, his body looks great. He's really done the work in the offseason. Like, he's moving great. He's carrying himself with a different level of confidence and physicality. Uh, and it's, it's on me to make sure that that shows up for him every time he takes the court. So uh, like everybody, I want all of our guys to take a step forward. And for him, I think the two steps are, he's done what he needed to do physically. He's done what he's needed to do off the court in the off season. Now it's continuing to hunt the three point shot and then being impactful on the glass because he's six, eight and a half, six, nine, two and a quarter now, and, and he looks great. We need that to translate into finishing plays on the boards for our team. You guys have the luxury of bringing back the top four scorers from last season. You spoke on Milan, but with the guard trio, what are the biggest ways that they've evolved and leveled up since last year? Evolved is, you know, they've been through some battles. They've been through um, some challenges. We've had adversity. I know there was positives to last season, and yet at the same time, we had some struggles too. Certainly early we did and had to fight through some things and continue to practice. Um, what I've seen from them more is an understanding of the value of practice every single day and how being competitive and winning, essentially, you're putting your team in position to win in every drill and every situation. You know, that's we talk to our guys about how you do anything is how you do everything. And I don't think that's a skill or a trait you turn on and off. So we've seen them understand how important it is, how competitive it is, how physical it is. And so our practice environment um, has been highly competitive. And, and guys have had to fight through that and work through that and, you know, at this point, you know, you're two and a half weeks into official practice. There starts to be a, a bump, a bruise, an ankle, uh, things that happen. And now you have to maintain that same level of focus and not be distracted by what may be impacting you uh, individually. Those guys have demonstrated the ability to do that at this point. And, you know, that's what's been in front of them. And we'll continue to tackle whatever's in front of us as we move forward. In practice, do you just see them kind of holding guys to like a higher standard? I think the intensity level is what stands out to me the most. Um, you know, would I love and would every coach love for our guys to continue to be more vocal and challenge one another? Absolutely. Is that an area that we need to be better? Absolutely. Uh, you hear coaches talk all the time about coach-led programs and player-led programs, and we're fortunate to have some of the experience we return. Uh, and there's an accountability with that experience to hold yourself to the highest standard so that you can hold others accountable because it starts with you. If you don't do your job and carry yourself a certain way, then you know it's it's impossible for you to demand that of others. So definitely uh, want to challenge our guys to continue to be more vocal. That will be something not just from a hey give effort standpoint, 
but really defensive communication uh, is important. Uh, having each other's back is important, and that's an area where we can all be better. I know you don't care about preseason rankings. Most coaches don't, but you're projected as a preseason top 10 team. As you reflect on building up to what you accomplished last year, the expectations the program has this year, what has allowed you to build the program the way you have so effectively? You know, like I said earlier, we've, we've put a bow on last year and, and hopefully someday be able to come back and, and enjoy that experience with those guys that we had. Um, for the, the men that were part of the program that left us, uh, we take tremendous pride that we've prepared them for life to be ex uh, successful in whatever endeavor uh, they have moving forward. Uh, for those returning, they have an idea of what the work habits need to be, what the intensity, uh, and what things need to be. Uh, outside expectations uh, don't impact anything that we do internally in our program, uh, and they won't. And so for the last three years when we came in, there's not any expectation. And I recognize that now, you know, as th the guys that have been here before have done the hard work and performed, that now there's an outside expectation. But it, it doesn't change anything for us. Uh, it's something that our guys, as the season moves on, need to do a tremendous job of keeping their focus on the team and, and not being, you know, falling victim to social media and polls and, and things that other people say. Um, because if we'd, if we'd listen to those things, we wouldn't be able to practice at the level we are. We wouldn't be able to compete at the level that we do. So uh, we're just going to focus on what we have to do day in and day out and welcome the challenge on game night when it presents itself. And I know that our guys are ready to, you know, to take on that challenge. How exciting has it been for you to kind of teach your players to focus on the day in, day out process of getting better and ignoring all of the things that people like us try and feed your team? Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, it's, it's a great life lesson. More than, look, we're highly competitive. We want to win every game. We want to win championships. I want to build men to be successful as husbands, fathers, community leaders, business owners whatever they choose to be moving forward. And so that same level of focus, intentionality, uh, we take a lot of pride in our daily schedule, uh, what we do every single day and how we build out that schedule. Um, it's the same thing I learned from my parents growing up. It's the same thing you see in successful people, ability to focus on the task at hand, uh, what's important, keep the main thing the main thing, uh, and don't allow yourself be, to be distracted because the things that you can't control aren't important anyway. So. The only thing you do have control over are the things in front of you, and we will work tirelessly to do that. Hopefully, uh, the young men in our program will adapt that mindset and mentality that we're demanding every single day. When you, when you go to the portal, do you have kind of common threads or, or things you look at when you're trying to bring guys in? And what uh, have, have each of those transfers brought so far? We look for guys that, again, have, have proven to win have handled adversity, have been through challenges, uh, that they're self-aware. Um, we haven't spent a lot of time chasing guys that don't fall into those categories. So for many, it's just like the external um, expectations. We don't look at recruiting rankings. We don't care what the transfer rankings say. We don't care how many stars guys have by their name. We're looking for blue collar guys that have shown those attributes of do hard work, bring something to the table, have a self-awareness, know how you can impact and drive winning. And for the most part, when we start to talk to transfers, we're at the point where we're saying, do not come here if you're not ready for this. If you're not built for this and you don't want to be challenged every day and you don't want to be demanded from and you don't want to be held accountable, go somewhere else and we'll play against you because we want guys here that understand that. And so we find out really quickly when we're recruiting guys. Um, it, it doesn't usually take more than one conversation to see like, this is for somebody or it's not for somebody. And for those that it's not, that's great too. We, we wish those guys the best. Um, but I think the guys that we've brought in embody those traits and those characteristics. And that will be demonstrated when they have the chance to take the floor. It certainly has on a daily basis in our, in our practice. But to me, there's a very specific young person that fits into our program. And we have tremendous confidence in who those guys are and the work that we can do with them and continue to develop them. But it's all rooted in hard work, handling adversity, and you know, bringing what you can bring to the team. Coach, Coach. TJ, uh, uh, Matt Heisey, or Nate Heisey, what has he added to your team? And also, I think he kind of touched on this, what were the qualities that attracted you to uh, his skill set? Yeah, Nate Heisey is someone who, a fierce competitor. 
a fierce competitor. Um, wants to guard the other team's best player. Uh, has proven always to get rebounds, loose balls, make effort-based plays. Uh, physically, he likes to win his matchup. Uh, offensively, he has the ability to knock down shots, uh, make good decisions with the basketball. He's always been a great assist to turnover guy. He's been a good three-point shooter. Uh, is somebody that has a skill to cut without the basketball. Uh, he's really elevated the play overall and the competitive spirit within our building. Um, because he's been very well coached at Northern Iowa. He had a tremendous coach in Ben Jacobson. He's been very well schooled. And so we're fortunate that when he comes in our program, he's got so many great habits that Coach Jacobson built with him. And then he has all those natural competitive things that he brings to the table every single day. And so um, he's going to be fun to watch. He's, he's fun to have him practice every day. Uh, we challenge him, and he rises to that challenge. Uh, he's somebody that has great versatility out there. He can play with a lot of lineups and a lot of combinations. And uh, I've just he's been a, a huge positive for us, and we're going to continue to demand that, that that stays true going forward. Coach, <clears throat> obviously last season, you know, having to deal with teams going out like Texas and Oklahoma and then new teams last season now. Going into this season, you had another four teams from the Pac-12 in Arizona, Colorado, and such. What have you seen from these teams kind of bring a new challenge to you come conference play? You know, we have tremendous respect for, for everybody that we play, the coaches and, and uh, the teams and the programs and everybody that comes in. Um, we know how hard they work. We know what talent, how talented the players are. We know how great the coaches are in the programs. Um, and at the same time, just like in our program, we have a, a model and a process that we believe in. Uh, be playing in the Big 12, like, we don't feel like we're changing, adapting for other teams coming in and out that we feel confident in how we're doing things that um, as you come in, there's some differences to the Big 12 conference that I feel like other teams adjust to when they come into the league. So I have tremendous respect, um, you know, for the four programs coming in, Coach Lloyd at Arizona, Coach Boyle at Colorado, uh, Coach Hurley at Arizona State, and Coach Smith at Utah. A lot of those guys coached against in the past and have known for a number of years. So I know what a great job they do and what great coaches they are. Um, yet at the same time, it doesn't change how we practice. It doesn't change how we prepare. Um, certainly as we go into those matchups, um, there's, there's things we're attentive to as we get ready to play them. Uh, but we have tremendous belief in the way we attack every single day and how we practice every day and how that will show up for us uh, when the games approach. And obviously, a guy like JT Rock redshirted last season. What have you kind of seen from the summer preparing for the season? JT is another that's done a tremendous job uh, with his body and how he's worked in the weight room. Pete Link, our strength coach, also de deserves a lot of credit for the progress JT has made. When you come in as a 17-year-old that only went to high school for three years like he did last year, what a challenge that is, especially to come into a Big 12 program that – demands a level of physical play and effort every day. Um, and he handled that very well. And now, again, like everybody, there's a step to take. He's taken that step physically uh, and how he's worked in the weight room, what he's done with his conditioning. Um, it's going to be important for him. Again, he's still 18. So as, as, as much as we believe in JT and as much as we believe in his long term, he's still 18, playing against guys every day in practice that are 23 and 24 and guys that in the conference have that level of experience as well. And so uh, it's that blend of patience and urgency, uh, continuing to build his confidence with the work that he does every single day. But it's patience with understanding he's still, at the end of the day, this would be his true freshman year and he's 18 years old. But then also having high demands to say, hey, every day this is what it's going to take. And we know you can do it, but we're going to demand that you do it on a daily basis. And he's taken a step that way, and we're continuing to see that progress. Hey, Coach, what can you say about Taman's skill set and how he's added to it? Yeah, I think the thing for Taman, which is so cool, like in his first year, you know, obviously tasked with run our team, guard the other team's point guard. Uh, don't think everyone quite realized what an amazing job he actually did with that as a freshman, knowing everything that's on his plate. And he, he did terrific. And then last year, uh, I think the thing that most will point to is the shooting, uh, especially from the three-point line. I mean, shot 39%, led us in three-point shooting. Uh, that's the byproduct of his hard work, his focus. Uh, he spends a lot of extra time with Coach Crawford on our staff in the gym, just making sure that 
mentally he's in the right place when those shots show up and present themselves. So in terms of where does he take a step, he played so well last year. I mean, arguably as well as any guard in the Big 12 Conference. So I know that there's things that are important to him that he wants to achieve and accomplish. Uh, I'm not sure there is as much about personal awards and statistics as, as much as what our team accomplishes and the leader that he can become. Uh, and how he can uplift others and, and do that every single day. And uh, he's off to a great start. Uh, I really value who he is as a person, how he works every day, uh, the character that he exudes in everything that he does. Um, but I think his, his step this year is more about how does he impact others better because we know that he understands at a high level the accountability he needs to bring. It's how do you elevate those around you to continue to be better. Noyes went overseas to Lithuania for that FIBA thing. Uh, what did you notice that he kind of took away from that? And he also comes into a roster where you've got a lot of depth, too, at his position. So I mean, what, what's kind of his outlook and ability to help the team this season? Yeah, specifically in that experience with FIBA, I mean, he showed in the U18s that you know, all throughout Europe, he was one of the better scorers um, to, to participate in that competition. I mean, he averaged right around 20 points a game. Um, Noyes is not just a three-point shooter. I think so many times people look at a guy like him and say, well, that's all that he does. I mean, he's, he's a great decision maker with the basketball. He's a guy that takes possessions offensively from good to great because he has a feel. Um, he's still working every single day on the physical things to, to do those things defensively and on the glass. Um, he's tasked with a unique challenge. You know, when he was originally set to come in, there was going to be three guys in the recruiting class. and JT came a year early. Uh, another young man's not with our program anymore. And so he's the only freshman. Like, he's literally the only freshman, which um, that alone is a, is a mental challenge that he takes on every day. And he's done a great job with it. So um, I think he demonstrated this summer what he's capable of. Um, he's somebody that I have tremendous confidence in as we move forward and what he will be able to do and the steps he'll be able to take. And it's great for him to compete every single day in practice with some really good guards because that's only going to make him better with his development as he moves forward. So he's embraced it. He's self-aware. He's a worker. And you know his skill level and his decision-making and playmaking are, are really uh, things that stand out.